Oh, that's still not good enough for the Lord. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Mic test. Testing one. Good. God is good all the time. Amen. Come on, let's pray. Here, get that. Let's pray. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor today, Father. We thank you for your word that is truth without error. And Father, we thank you for the hearer of the word, that the hearer of the word will become a doer of your word. And Father, we thank you after hearing your word, our lives will never, ever be the same. We give you all the praise, glory, honor, thanksgiving, and adoration. And we worship and magnify you on this day, giving you what's rightfully due to you. We praise you, we thank you, and we honor you. In Jesus' name, put your hands together. Give the Lord a big hand clap. Come on, give the Lord a bigger hand clap than that. Hallelujah. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. Go with me in your Bible to the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, the four-day weekend in Jesus' name. 1 Corinthians 2. How's everyone? Don't sound like it. How's everyone? Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. All right, let's raise our devices, our Bibles. We're going to get right into the word and repeat after me. Say it like you mean it. This is my Bible. No, say it like you mean it. This is my Bible. I Say it like you mean it. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I am a believer, not a doubter. I am a doer, not just a hearer. In my life is the better after having heard the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by word of God. Amen. First Corinthians 4 and verse number, um, first Corinthians 2, verse 4 through 5. Are you there? If you're not there, say amen. Okay, that means you're not there. First Corinthians, thank you, sir. First Corinthians 2, verse number 4. Somebody shout hallelujah. We serve a good God, amen? All right, 1 Corinthians, not say amen if you have it. All right, 1 Corinthians 2, verse number 4 through 5, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of, me, of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of power of the spirit and of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Somebody shout amen. I want to continue my teaching on worship and on praise um, because my objective is very simple this morning. I want to get to the believer to develop a thirst um, for this whole um, lifestyle of praise. When we talk about praise and we talk about thanksgiving, we're talking about it being a lifestyle. And we said that praise is a joyful noise unto the Lord, thanking and adoring him for his goodness because he is worthy alone to deserve all the praise. Amen. And uh, we should always remind him of his greatness, and we should always remember that when we start praising God, we put ourselves in a position to tap into his power. When we tap into his power, things will be accelerated, and then we can see God move on our behalf. The whole purpose of our praise is to get God to intervene in life situations. Can I get somebody to say amen? How many of y'all need God to intervene into something? How many of y'all need God to cause a breakthrough in your life? Amen. Amen. So we know if that is the case, if we know what we need, we also need to know what it's going to take to make that happen. And so what's going to take to make that happen is the believer having a lifestyle of praise and thanksgiving. Regardless of what it looks like, regardless of how tough life may seem, we should always be willing to lift up holy hands and offer up sometimes a sacrifice of praise. I don't feel like it, amen, but I'm not moved by the way I feel. God deserves it in spite of. Somebody say, good morning, Jesus. He deserves it in spite of. We should come to him for everything. If he is the source, if he is the sustainer of my life, then I should wake up every morning recognizing and honoring him for who he is. Now, when we look at the book of Psalms, Psalms was written about God. It wasn't written about us trying to get something from God. And most people, they really don't pay any attention to God till they need him to do something. Most people really don't put a lot of emphasis on 
their relationship with Jesus until they really need a supernatural move. But we should always wake up with praise and thanksgiving in our heart. We should never wait till an emergency to call on the name of Jesus. That should be the first thing that comes out of our mouths every morning when we wake up. Jesus paid it all for us. And everything that he died on the cross for us, we are entitled to it and it was freely given to us. If somebody give you something freely without you having to pay for it, the least you could do is say thank you. Can I get somebody to shout thank you this morning? Can I get somebody to give the Lord a hand clap this morning? Now my, my goal, my goal is to change the paradigm thinking in this church. To get people to really understand that if we don't have a lifestyle of worship, we won't see God move the way he want to. God is, God is ready to manifest healing if he find people that will be willing to worship him. Somebody say amen. There's people in here right now that needs the miraculous to take place. They need the supernatural to take place. Boy, I don't want to say this. But they need God to do something right now because their days have been numbered. Come on now. And some of them make their way to the house of the Lord in expectation of something supernatural happening. And we got to make sure that we're not being selfish and not offering up praise on the behalf of somebody else. All right, so, so now, there is no dispute this world needs the transforming power of God. But the world can't see the power until the church offer the power in. Come on now. The world is waiting on the children of God to manifest God's power so they will believe that our God could do what he said he can do. Now, I don't have to wait on you. I could have a personal, you know, relationship with God, and I could get him to manifest in my own life, but wouldn't it be good if we all saw God do something for all of us at the same time? Wouldn't it be good to show up on Sunday morning and somebody came in with a disease and walked out healed in their body? Wouldn't it be good? for somebody to go to the doctor on this week and the doctor tell them, we don't know what happened. But looking at the results, something happened between last time and this time. Somebody shout, help me out. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell them to help me out. So this whole, the whole hallmark of the Christian faith is the manifestation of divine power. In other words, believers, it's not about what we say. It's about what we can see and what we can make happen in the spirit realm that will convince doubters that our God sits high and he looks low. But if you have no manifestation of God's power working in your life, Who's going to believe he can work in daylight? Somebody say amen. So we got to get a lifestyle of worship and a lifestyle of praise because God is ready um, to manifest some things in our lives. But he has to be invited into our situation. And the way we invite him in is we invite him in through our worship and through our praise. Satan works to overwhelm us, to keep us um, from this power. Because Satan understands that once we tap into the power, that there's nothing else he can do. Amen. That ought to be good news for somebody. That if I could, t if I could plug into the power source, that there's nothing the enemy can do to stop me from succeeding. If I could have a constant, you know, flow of God's power working through me. There's nothing the enemy can do to stop me. 
And the way I have that constant flow is I lift up my hands to God and I give him praise. And my lifting and my praising is like a tower. It's like a tower that carries energy from one place to another place. And when I do it, God is constantly pouring in me. And the more he pour in me, the more stronger I become. And the more I worship him, the more the light shines out of me, the more I'm willing to do things that I never thought I could do before. When I worship him and that power comes on inside of me, I'm able to go turn somebody's darkness into light. I'm able to go lay hands on somebody and watch the power of God heal their body. See, you thinking about yourself, God said, I want to give you the power for somebody else. So go with me real quick to Matthew 5, verse number 6. The degree of my spiritual fulfillment is directly proportionate to the level of my thirst and hunger for the things of God. And it takes, it takes um, a lot of discipline to have a thirst and hunger after the things of God. Because what has to happen is when it comes to the things of God, they have to be priority in our lives. Amen. And everything we do, we must do it thinking about advancing his kingdom and not concerned with our own personal needs and wants. I didn't get saved for me. I got saved for him. Because God needs examples in the earth of what his power looked like when it manifests in the life of a believer. All right, so watch what it says here, Matthew 5, verse number 6. Blessed are they that which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Go to Hebrews 11, verse number 6. Maybe you're not thirsty enough. Maybe you're not hungry enough. I've been hungry before, amen? There's nothing like being hungry. I said, there's nothing like being hungry. When you get hungry, you'll do anything to get some food. You got to get a spiritual hunger for God that you'll do anything to get to the house of the Lord to be fed the word of God, amen? Nothing on this earth or to keep you, or, or to distract you from wanting to be in God's presence. Nothing, amen. Nothing is more important to me than my relationship with Christ. Nothing is more important to me than me honoring and, and respecting God and giving him what's rightfully due to him. Nothing comes um, before God, especially when it comes to this whole attitude of, of praise and worship. Now, I watch people, they give praise to football teams. They give praise to basketball teams. They, they park half a mile to walk to stadiums to praise people that don't even know them. Somebody say amen. I said they walk miles, amen, uh, from here to the Double Tree Hotel, and they pay $100 a park to go praise somebody that don't even know them. Come on, somebody. And they buy all the gear to look like they are part of that community. They get the jersey, they get the hat, they get the socks, they get the shoes. Come on, somebody. They paint their face, and all that costs a whole lot of money. But then when it comes to the house of the Lord, when it comes time to get a uniform, they complain about a few dollars. That's because their priorities are out of order. Come on, somebody. They haven't made God a priority in their life. Everything is important to them but God. You got folk that serve their job more than they do their God that gave them the job. You got people that'll keep the tithe because they can do, they think they can do better with the hundred percent than they can worshiping God with the ten percent. You got folk who hold on to their praise because they don't believe that it's important to open their mouth and give thanks to the one and only God. So they'll stay silent until the devil jump in their chest and then they want to holler, Jesus, Jesus, why have thou forsaken me? 
Why wait till all hell break loose to give him praise? Why don't you give him praise when the times are good? Why don't you give him praise when you have all the money in the bank? Why don't you give him praise all the time? It should be a lifestyle. Somebody shout, it's a lifestyle. Come here, everybody shout, it's a lifestyle. I'm not waiting until something big happened to start praising God. Hebrews 11, verse number 6, but without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Go to Psalm 63. God rewards those who seek him. I say God reward those who seek him. How many God seekers in the house? All right, go to Psalm 63, verse number one. Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is, to see thy power in thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. When we fail to rely on the power, when we fail to rely on the anointing, we tend to lean on the arms of the flesh, which we always choose the path of least resistance. Come on now. And, you know, we got to get to a place to where when we really trust God, we lean on God for everything. Come on, somebody. When you really trust God, you don't lean on your own wisdom and you don't lean on your own knowledge. When you really trust God, you let God order your steps in everything that you achieve in life. God, I don't want to go after it if you're not leading me to it. Go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter. Got to change your attitude about praise. Got to change your attitude about things of God. God deserves our best praise. He deserves the best of who we are. We ought not just be giving God anything. Come on, somebody shout amen. I'm no longer allowing our church to just give God anything. We move in front just throwing up anything to God to having a spirit of excellence in everything we do. Because God, he deserves the best. If we're going to worship him, we need to give him our best worship. If we're going to praise him, we need to give him our best praise. God requires that from the believer. In the Old Testament, when they offered up sacrifices, God said, bring me the best that you have. When they offered up, you know, sheep, God say, bring me the best sheep. I don't want something that everybody done used and abused. Jesus said, when I go into the city, bring me the best donkey. Come on, somebody. Jesus said, when it's time for me, um, to, uh, for you to offer up an offering, give me the first of it. Don't give me that what you have picked through. Amen. Don't give me that what you don't want. You wouldn't want God just giving you anything. As a matter of fact, we got the audacity to go to God and ask him for the best of everything. But when it comes to him, we want to give him anything. Come on, somebody. If God was to set 15 different cars up here and 10 of them had dents in them and one of them, come on now, had three tires on it and one of them didn't have an air condition, and one of them didn't have, you know, a window on the inside of it, and he had a spanking brand new one over there, I promise you, none of y'all will pick the ones that are defective. You'll first go get the one that everything is working, everything look good, because you in your own personal life don't want nobody giving you just anything. Come on, somebody. So why we do God like that? Why we bring anything to God? Watch this. Our praise to God should just be based on the mere fact that when he took us, he took us with all of our mess. Can I get somebody? 
there was a mess to shout amen. God did not bring you in the family based on how good you were. As a matter of fact, God knew that if he didn't bring you in, that you never get to where you are right now. You ought to thank God that you are not where you were five years ago. I'm going to get somebody to preach back at me. I'm grateful to God that I'm not the same old person that I was five years ago. Glory to God. That's enough for me right there to give God some praise. Whoo, glory. I think about how good God is to me. Lord Jesus, I just throw up a hand. Say, Lord, I just want to thank you. Boy, look at what you've done for me, God. I tell you how to go. First Peter shows the price to be paid through this unrestrained. We ought to have what's called unrestrained praise. Nothing is going to hold me back. All right? Are you there? It says, but ye are a chosen generation. That's good news in itself. A royal priesthood. Somebody shout, I'm a holy nation. A particular people that ye should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Go to Psalms 107. I've been called out of darkness. Anybody glad about that? Been called out of darkness. I was once blind, but now I see. Who glory to God. Somebody shout, I can see again. God called me out of darkness. God say, I saw everything that you did, but I chose you. No, no, everybody put your hands together right there. Don't, don't, ever, get, don't ever get too polished up that you forgot God chose you. Come on, somebody. Don't, don't, ever, get, don't ever get too puffed up that you forgot God chose you. Don't ever forget where he brought you from. <laughs> don't, ever, don't ever get so high-minded that you forgot that it was him that scooped you up out of the miry dirt and out of the miry clay. Don't ever get too puffed up. Woo! Lord, when I think about where you brought me from, when I think about your mercy is being new every morning. Oh, Jesus Christ. When I think about the undeserved favor that you give me, glory to God. When I think about the little stuff that you do, I don't have to wait on the big stuff when I think about the little stuff that you do.